Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I'm going to show you how to install full Chrome OS with access to Android from within Chrome OS on an old laptop or an old PC. And this isn't using Chromium OS, Cloud OS, or Fade OS. This is Chrome OS that you can install on pretty much any Intel-based PC. Now, personally, the oldest computer that I tried it on was this older Optiplex that I have here, which has a third-gen Intel CPU. But I suspect this would work on a second-gen Intel CPU on up. I've also installed it on this little Asus laptop here. This has 2 gigs of RAM, 32 gigabytes of storage, and a dual-core N4000 CPU. I pick these up around Black Friday for 100 bucks every year. So yeah, this is full Chrome OS for your laptop or your desktop. We also have access to Android and the Google Play Store. And you can install Linux apps just like you can with most of the newer Chromebooks out there. But before we get started here, I do want to give a big shout out to Kadar Nimbalkar. He's over here on YouTube. I'll leave a link to his channel in the top of the description and at the end of the video. Him and a few other devs came up with this method and it works amazingly. He's actually created a full tutorial and I'll leave a link for that in the description if you're interested in checking that out. But I figured I'd go ahead and tackle it also because I'm really impressed by this. So this is actually really easy to install and I'll give you a quick rundown. First thing you're going to need is a USB drive, 16 gigabytes or larger. I'm using a 32 gigabyte drive. USB 3.0 is recommended to get the speed out of it. What we're going to do is install Linux Mint on this USB drive so we can run it live. We're also going to transfer our Chrome OS installation files to that USB. And basically what we're going to do is start up Linux Mint running live from the USB and then install Chrome OS to the PC we're running this all on. The method I'm going to show you in this video will wipe the internal drive of the PC we're going to be installing this on. So if you have Windows installed on your PC and you use it every day, don't go doing this. But if you have an extra laptop or an old desktop laying around, you could definitely try it. In this video, I'm going to be using a separate Windows 10 PC to get my USB drive set up, but you could always do this on Linux or Mac. Some of the applications we're going to use will be different on those operating systems. But if you're ready to get Chrome OS installed on your laptop or PC, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's go ahead and download everything we need. We're going to get this image set up on a USB drive, and then we can install it on said PC. Like I mentioned, this was actually brought to my attention by Kadar Nimbalkar. I think that's his last name, over here on YouTube. I'm going to leave links to his YouTube channel in the description. He's got a few other tutorials on how to triple boot this up. Now, the first thing you'll need is that USB drive. I do recommend at least the 16 gigabyte drive. I'm using a 32 gigabyte drive here. It's plugged into my PC. All links for everything mentioned in this video will be in the description. First thing we need to do is download Linux Mint. And we're just going to use this as a live USB so we can install Chrome OS using this operating system. We're going to run this all from the USB. I'm going to get the 64-bit version. And you can find a download link here. Next on the list, we need to pick up Rufus, or Rufus, however you want to pronounce it. This is going to allow us to flash that image to a USB drive. Unfortunately, Etcher won't work with this method. Now we need to download a few files from GitHub. Get the latest version. Right now, the latest version is 4.19 stable. We're going to download Brunch right here, R81. Now we actually need to get the Chrome OS image. And from this link, you're going to find Ramus right here. We're going to go all the way over here and get the latest version, which is 80 as of making this video, but it could be higher in the future. That's the largest file we're going to be downloading. It's 1.2 gigabytes and we need to extract it. And the final thing we'll need is the installation SH. So from this page here, right click, save as, and I'm just going to save it to my desktop. It's going to save as an install.sh. So I'm going to go ahead and let this finish up. And then I'm going to place them all on my desktop for easy access. All right, so I have everything downloaded. We have Linux Mint. We have Rufus, Brunch, Chrome OS, and the install.sh. First thing we need to do is flash our drive with Linux Mint. We're going to start up Rufus. From within this application, we need to make sure that we have our USB drive chosen. Just make sure it is the correct USB. I'm using a 32 gigabyte drive. Select. We're going to navigate to where we have the Linux Mint image. I've placed mine on my desktop right here, Linux Mint. And finally, we'll click start. This is going to flash Linux Mint to that USB drive so we can boot it up live on our PC. You get a couple warnings. Yes. And we want to write this in an ISO image mode. Click OK. 
All the data on the USB drive will be destroyed. I don't mind that, so I'm going to click OK. We just want Linux Mint installed on that USB. We're going to go ahead and let this finish up. And we're now done flashing Linux Mint to our USB drive. Now it's time to get the other files we downloaded ready to go. So I'm going to create a folder on my desktop called Chrome OS. And inside of this folder, I'm going to put the install.sh that we downloaded. We also need to extract both of these. So I'm going to right click on the branch and I'm going to extract it to its own folder. So now we have branch over here. I'm going to snap it to the right hand side and we have four files that we need to put in that Chrome OS folder we created on our desktop. We're just going to take these, place them right in here. And finally, we need to extract the Chrome OS image. Right click, extract. This is going to take a little longer. So we now have the Chrome OS image extracted. We're going to open this up. I'm going to toss it over here to the right hand side. We need to rename this file ramusrecovery.bin. So we'll rename. It's actually already in here. Ramus underscore recovery dot bin. We're going to take this and put it in our Chrome OS folder. So I'm going to open that folder up we created. We now have six files inside of here. Root C, Ramus underscore recovery dot bin, install dot sh, EFI secure, EFI legacy, and the Chrome OS install.sh. Now what we're going to do is open up our USB drive that we flash Linux Mint to, should be listed as Linux Mint, and we're going to place this whole folder that we created right on the USB drive. Give it some time to finish up. All right, we now have our USB drive ready, but there's one last thing that I want to show you. Inside of this USB drive, we put that Chrome OS folder, and inside of here, we have the install.sh. I'm going to open this up with Notepad++. I do recommend using Notepad++ to edit this. At the very end here, you'll see SDA. This is the hard drive we're going to be installing to. On some computers, it's not known as SDA. 99% of the time, if you're using a real internal hard drive or a 2.5 inch SSD, it will be known as SDA. But on some newer low end computers, it's going to be known as MMCB LK0. That's what it was on one of my little netbooks. You can actually change this right here using Notepad++ and you may need to do that depending on the name of your hard drive. I'll show you how to find out your name once we boot into Linux Mint and start the installation. So now we're going to grab our USB drive, move over to the PC we want to install this on, and get it set up. Alright, so here's a little cheap Windows machine that I already installed it on, but for this video I will be installing it to this old Optiplex back here. So in order to get this running correctly, we will need to disable Secure Boot on our PC and enable UEFI booting. And to do that, you will have to get into your BIOS. On this specific machine, when I'm booting it up, if I press F2 a couple times, it'll bring me to my BIOS. On other machines, it's F12, F10, F9, or even Escape. Your best bet is to do a quick Google search and find out what key brings you into your BIOS when you're starting your machine up. So I've now accessed the BIOS on this little machine. I'm going to move the camera a bit closer so we can get a better look. So this machine's using a newer BIOS. Yours might look a little different, but the options should be the same. So from here, we have Main, Advanced, Boot. We're going to go to Boot. And inside of here, on an older PC, you'll have the option from Legacy to UEFI for your boot option. Make sure it's changed to UEFI. On newer machines, most of the time, it will boot automatically from UEFI. But if you have the option here, make sure it's set to that instead of Legacy. The next thing we need to do is disable Secure Boot. Under Security, you'll have an option called Secure Boot. Make sure it's disabled. Once you have that done, make sure you save the settings and exit. We're now going to boot from that USB drive. So we're going to go ahead and grab that USB drive we created on our other PC. We're going to plug it into the laptop or desktop that we're using, and we're going to enter the boot menu. Again, different manufacturers use different keys. For this one here, it's Escape, but it could be F7, F9, F12. Do a Google search to find out. I'm going to power the unit on, press escape to get to my boot menu. And this is going to allow me to boot from my internal hard drive or the USB I have plugged in. So I'm going to select my USB drive and press enter. 
And now we want to choose the very top option. We're going to boot into Linux Mint. This is all going to be running live from the USB drive. And from within Linux Mint, then we can install Chrome OS to our internal drive. So we're now running Linux Mint. I'm going to go ahead and plug this into a game capture device so we can get a better look at the screen. And then we'll install Chrome OS. It's actually really easy from here on. Okay, so here we are running Linux Mint. Let's go ahead and get Chrome OS installed. First thing we need to do is make sure we're online. I'm connected over Ethernet because this PC that I'm using doesn't have Wi-Fi built in. But if you have Wi-Fi, down in the bottom corner, you'll see a little Wi-Fi icon. And you can connect from there. Now, like I mentioned, we do need to find out the name of our hard drive. Most of the time it's going to be SDA, but sometimes it won't be. So we're going to go to the bottom left-hand corner to the Linux Mint icon. And from here, we're going to type in Gparted. We're going to open up Gparted. And this is going to give us a list of disks attached to our PC. So I have a 250 gigabyte SSD in this thing. And I also have my USB drive. It's 32 gigabytes. This is my internal hard drive. The name is SDA, so I'm good to go. If this is a different name, you will have to move back over to Windows and edit that SH file and name it exactly what it says right here. But mine's SDA, and 99% of the time, it will be SDA. So let's get the installation going. Really easy to do. We're going to open up our home folder or any kind of file browser. We're going to go to File System. And from here, we're going to find that Chrome OS folder we created. This is the one here. We're going to open it up. And inside, we'll see we have that install.sh. We need to run that, and we're going to run it from Terminal. We're going to right-click inside of this folder, open in Terminal, and we're going to type in sudo sh install.sh. Press Enter. It's going to download some dependencies. You need to be online for this to work. Make sure you subscribe to Kendar's YouTube channel. And now it's time to do the installation. This is going to wipe the internal drive, our SDA. Nothing's going to be left on it except for Chrome OS. Now, like I mentioned, Kendar does have a couple videos showing you how to triple boot a system like this, but personally, I don't deal with that because somebody's going to end up messing up their Windows installation that they had work on, and then it's my fault. So what we're going to be doing is just installing to this internal hard drive. We're going to make this PC into a strictly Chrome OS PC. So if you're ready to wipe that drive and install Chrome OS, type yes. We're going to give this a little time. It usually takes anywhere from 3 to 10 minutes depending on your internet connection and the speed of your hard drive. The installation is now finished. We can type sudo reboot or you can reboot from right here. Restart. We're going to pull that USB drive out now. And there we have it. We can start Chrome OS from here, or it'll automatically start after five seconds. It's going to run through a little bit of a setup slash update process at first, so let this finish. We now have Chrome OS installed on our PC. We're going to click Let's Go. Like I mentioned, I'm just connected to Ethernet with this one here. Go ahead and agree to all the terms. It's going to check for updates. You'll have to sign in just like you would with any other Chromebook. And you got Chrome OS up and running along with Android 9. So this is a fully functional Chrome OS desktop or laptop depending on what you installed it on. And here it is. So yeah, I mean, everything works pretty well in here. We'll just head over to YouTube real quick. We also have Google Play. And I'm going to install one application just to show you that this is running on that PC. Got four gigs of RAM here. And I have the i5-3450. So that's on the Optiplex desktop that I showed you using built-in Intel HD graphics. And it's super smooth. You can also install the Linux beta if you'd like to. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on so we can run Linux apps in Chrome OS. 
But that's pretty much it for this one. I really appreciate you watching, and I do want to give another big shout out to Gadar for coming up with this. Link for his channel is in the description. He goes into a little more detail on different things about this, so definitely check his channel out. All links for everything mentioned in this video are in the description. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.